Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Wow, that was good. That was good. So we, we've been kind of walking down this road about the, the gifts of Christmas. And, and, you know, I want you to understand in the midst of this, we've been looking at love and hope and joy. And Christ is the biggest gift, the greatest gift of all. And that's what we've been, he, he's saturated each and every one of these gifts. Today we're talking a little bit about peace. And uh, to mention peace in the world today it seems almost like an oxymoron. There's, there's not a lot of peace going on. But, but when you think of peace or peaceful, something typically comes to mind. It, it could be, it could be um, um, a, a serene waterfall, you know, nice and gentle. There used to be, there was one just like this near where my dad used to live in, in uh, Massachusetts. It was just very peaceful it, all year long. It just flowed nice and calm. It was very, very nice. Or maybe uh, you, you're, you're more into the lakes. You know, I, um, I've been out to Lake Arthur where there's, there's absolutely no movement sometimes. And it's, it's, it's peaceful. It's nice. Um, here's one that uh, every parent can appreciate. That is the picture of peace for many parents. You know, the baby's sleeping. Uh, I, I never really understood the concept of, oh, he sleeps like a baby. What does that mean? He wakes up every two hours? I don't know. But, but a, a sleeping baby usually represents something peaceful and calm. There's a problem with these three pictures, though. Anybody know what the problem is with these three pictures? They don't last. They don't, they don't last. Peace, this kind of peace doesn't last. True peace in our world today looks a little bit more like this. I don't know if you can really see it, but that's a, a raging waterfall. It's a famous painting. A storm in the background. I got a little circle around. There's a little dove that's kind of hidden away in the rocks, over its, uh, on a nest, over its eggs, and it's just kind of calmly, peacefully sitting there with everything raging around it. But it's at peace. Kind of a picture of us in the world. The world is crazy around us, but we're still given this gift of peace. Here's another one. I love this one. Uh, that, that's, uh, that's a man standing on that lighthouse, and there's this raging uh, uh, waters torn around, and he's, you can't really see it too well, but he's just kind of leaning up. I think he's even got a pipe in his mouth. He's kind of leaning up against the door, and he's just kind of looking, looking around. He's at peace despite what's going on around him. Here, uh, biblically speaking, here's one of my, my favorite pictures of peace. They're in the midst of a storm. Now, these guys, uh, uh, the, the, uh, many of the disciples were fishermen, used to being on the water, used to being on the water in the storms, Apparently, this was one of those storms that was just a little bit too much, and they were freaking out. But Jesus was sleeping in the back of the boat. And they went to him, and they said, they said, Lord, don't you care that we're going to die? Here are the fishermen, scared. But here's the king of kings, the prince of peace, at rest, peacefully in the back of the boat. This, I think, the bottom three is a better picture of peace for us, the kind of peace that God wants to give us. He's not going to take away all of our problems. He's not going to take away all of, our, all of the issues in life. We live in a fallen, cursed world. There is sin running amok in this world. But in the midst of it, God offers peace. So I don't know where you are today. I don't know what's going on in, in individual lives. Uh, I suspect everyone here has a list of chaos. Somewhere in their world, either your immediate circle or extended family or whatever the case may be, I suspect that not everything is like the top three pictures for you guys. It'd be nice, but I suspect that's not a reality. I suspect most of us live in the bottom three pictures, but we can have peace in the midst of that. And that's uh, what we talk about today. The world defines peace as quiet tranquility, freedom from disturbance. But it's often in situations that are exactly opposite uh, that we, we see the peace of God more clearly. And, and that's the kind of world that Jesus came into. You know, we sing, we sang it last night, we sang uh, Silent Night. And it, and it conjures up calm, soothing, warm, peaceful feelings. And it's great for about three minutes. Then the song's over. And then we transition back into the chaos of life. I'm not knocking the song. I love the song. I loved singing that last night. But that's not the world that Jesus came into. Jesus came into a world of darkness and chaos and, and 
it, it was, it was uh, uh, not a calm, peaceful world. Back then, there was a divide between God and people. There was conflict among families and nations. There was political turmoil. The Roman oppression of Israel was insane. There was the demanding physical travel of Mary. We don't think about that. Um, moms, nine months pregnant, traveling by donkey over 100 miles. How do you feel about that? Probably not too good, right? Probably not too good. Uh, but we, we miss that because we focus on quiet little night in Bethlehem. And, and it's good. There's nothing wrong. But we've got to understand, Jesus came in the midst of this turmoil. Uh, they were forced to travel by the, the political engines of the day. There was unrest, uh, unrest in the hearts of many, many people. And in the midst of all this, Jesus, God in the flesh, the Prince of Peace, comes onto the scene. And Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 says, For unto us a child is... Well, uh, you know what? Let's do this, because uh, we, we do this periodically. Let's stand up for a second. And let's read this together, Okay. Uh, we'll, start, we're gonna, we'll start with the word for. Let's do this together. Ready? For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. The Mighty God. The Everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace. Thank you. You sit. Let's pray as we, we step into this. Father, we read this passage, Lord. And, and it's very familiar to us. We read it year after year after year since the, the, the first year we get saved, Lord. The first year we come to know you. Christmas time comes along and we know this verse. We come to this verse. But Lord, do we understand this verse? You came in the midst of the chaos, the darkness, the sin, the corruption, uh, the, the, the turmoil. You came as the wonderful counselor. You came as the mighty God. You came as the everlasting father. You came as the prince of peace to bring peace into this world. Father, we thank you so very much. We come to you in Jesus' name. Amen. According to this verse, our Lord Jesus is far more than a symbol of peace. Merely a symbol. He's not like, we, we got an American flag over there, and I love the American flag, but, but I love our country. The American flag represents that, okay? Jesus wasn't a representation of peace. He is our peace. He is the peace that came into the world. He is the Prince of Peace. And, uh, you know, if you've, uh, uh, and that's what we're kind of talking about this Advent season. And if you've been with us over the past few weeks, you know that uh, we've been kind of looking uh, um, at, at, our, at our Advent and we've been kind of lighting the candles for um, um, hope, uh, Christ represents hope. Hope that comes into the world, into a world that is hopeless. Okay, and we, we light the candles because he is the light that comes into the world and we get closer and closer. Okay, and then, then we talked about his love. The greatest sacrifice, the greatest act of love of all time was Christ coming for us who don't deserve it. And then last week we talked about joy. And the joy of the Lord, not the joy of the world. Very, very different. And, and today we're going to, we're going to be looking at, at peace. But not just the peace that the world offers, not the kind of peace that comes with, hey, as long as my bills are paid and the houses are falling down around us and the kids are okay and the job is secure and, and school's going all right and there's no conflict with, uh, with my spouse. And the, No, that stuff's going to happen. Just like hope is not the absence of despair, okay? Joy is not the absence of sorrow. Love is not the absence of hate. Peace is not the absence of conflict. Peace, the peace that God gives us is not subject to what's going on in the world. The peace that God came to bring is not contingent on all of our ducks being in a row. The peace that God gives us uh, is for us now in real life, today. <laughs> now the process of daily life uh, may have looked very, very different back uh, than it did back in the first century. 
But we still strive, we still struggle, we still want to live in a world that's turmoil. The noise, the chaos, the conflict, the, uh, the, 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 the craziness, the uncertainty seeks to devour any possibility at having peace. Think about that. Have you ever been somewhere when it suddenly got very quiet? Maybe, maybe, uh, how many of you have ever, you, you know, you're, you're in your house and then the power goes out. Anybody ever been in a house where the power goes out? All the lights go down, the computer screen goes off, and there's absolute what? Silence, quietness. Or how about... Um, those of you that like to, to, to camp and, and, and outdoorsy, uh, you ever been outside when, you know, you don't even realize the crickets are cricketing. I think that's a word, right? The crickets are cricketing, you know, wind is blowing. Is a, and then all of a sudden, it stops. You ever been outside when, it, when, when the crickets stop and there's silence? It's kind of creepy. It makes you wonder what made them stop. But all of a sudden, you realize there was a lot of noise. There was an incredible lot of, a lot of noise. And... and and, uh, you know, sometimes we don't even recognize all the noise that are, that's around us until it suddenly stops. And we hear, I want you to hear this, we hear the silence. We hear the silence. And the same can be true for peace in our lives. Sometimes we're so used to the chaos and the conflict, we come to expect it that we don't enjoy the peace of the Lord. We're so caught up. In what's going on around us, we're so caught up in trying to make this world okay so that we can have peace that we miss the fact that God has already given us his peace. So how do we, how do we find this peace in, in a chaotic world? Uh, we don't have to acquire it. We don't have to reach for it. We don't have to, to conquer it because God already get, has given it to us. But what does it look like as we unwrap this? Well, I know I didn't give you any notes today, um, uh, but first... We, God gives us, we get, what does it look like? It looks like peace with God. Peace with God. There's a bumper sticker. I'm sure that you're all familiar with it, and, and it looks like this. How many of you have ever seen a bumper sticker like this? All right? I almost, I, uh, I had, I Googled, Google image, goggled, Googled this picture. No peace, uh, no God, no peace. And, but I picked the wrong one earlier on. And it actually, it, somebody actually made a bumper sticker that was opposite. It said, um, no God um, um, and K-N-O-W, peace. And then it, they flipped, so they flipped it around so that it was, they were trying to say, if you, know, if you, if you think you know God, then you don't know real peace. They, they just, they flipped it around. And I actually, I, I wasn't even thinking, I'm, I'm put, cutting and pasting. And then I came down this one, I'm, I'm going, to, oh, I don't want them, I don't want that one. <laughs> I had to change that out. But you've all seen this one. Okay, and you know, it, they put it on, on the back of a bumper sticker, and, and, and it, can, it can sound kind of trite and cliche, uh, but don't let the fact that it's, a, that it's on a bumper sticker take away the truth of the message. There's a lot of truth, dynamic truth, in this message. Okay, when we know God, we can experience peace because of, because of who Christ is and what he did in coming to this world living perfectly, dying on the cross, paying the price for our sins, breaking the barrier between us and God, bringing us back into fellowship with him. You know, it's easy to, uh, for us to associate his life and work here on earth with salvation, which is obviously. But the Apostle Paul makes an important statement in Romans that we, we cannot overlook. He says this, Therefore, being justified by faith, listen to these words, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom also we have access by faith unto this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Fact is, you know, you look at this thing and you think, peace with God, but God is good. God loves us. What do you mean gave us peace with God? The fact of the matter is we were once enemies to the Lord. Our sin naturally separates us from him. Uh, uh, Isaiah 59 uh, goes on and says this, your iniquities, your sins, have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he cannot hear you. That's some scary th stuff right there. Okay? 
Jesus came, though, to conquer this. This is how we were before Christ. This is how we were uh, before Bethlehem. This is how we were before our own individual Bethlehems. What does that mean? Well, if you've called upon the name of the Lord, if you've placed your faith, your hope, and your trust in Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, that's like your Bethlehem. He's come into your life. He, Advent means arrival or coming. He's come into your life and, and has brought peace with God. No longer in animosity with him. No longer at, in uh, uh, turmoil with him. Fact of the matter is, our sin and God's holiness are not compatible. Our sin and God's holiness don't work together. And that's why Christ came and conquered death and hell and sin for us. He came to bring us peace with God. He took down that wall of separation. He took down the sin that was in between us and him. This is the gift of peace that he's given to us. I didn't come to know the Lord until I was 20 years old. And I was at war with God. For 19 years. Now you say, what do you mean? Were you a Satanist? Were you? No. I, but, I, but my lifestyle was not conducive to pleasing him. My heart was not drawn to him. Sin was in the way. And even though I wasn't waking up in the morning saying, I'm going to war with God. My spirit was. Until Christ came in and saved that. And rescued me. And then, and then in the twinkling of an eye... Because of what he did 2,000 years earlier, the war was over. And God signed a peace treaty with me in his blood. That's the gift of peace that he offers to us this morning. He gives us peace with God. He also gives us peace within. Peace within. Um, Have you ever been to the lake and seen a duck on the water? How many of you have ever seen a, a duck on the water? Is it, it's pretty incredible. It looks like they got, a, you think they must have a, a little um, um, inboard motor because they just kind of calm, right? They're looking around, nothing. And, and you look at that and you think, man, that's pretty peaceful. Until you look below the surface and you realize their legs are going like crazy. Right? Just beneath the surface, there's turmoil up top. I've never seen a duck frown and have pain in his eyes. I, I just see them kind of looking. But underneath, their legs are going like mad. And that's how life can be with you and, and with me. Many times, you know, we put on a good face. We fake it. We're pretty good at faking it. We're pretty good at smiling and saying, you know, somebody asks you, hey, how you doing? I'm good. Right? It's almost, it's almost conditioned. It just kind of, boom, I'm good. When really, we're not good. Right? We live in a world that there's stuff going on. Somebody come up to you, you could be having the worst day ever. But it's not socially acceptable for you to stop and say, I've got to be honest with you, I'm having the worst day ever. You know, then the other person's like, oh, okay, I wasn't expecting that. Well, oh, look what time it is, I've got to get going. Yeah. No. But, but the reality of it is we can put on a good face, yet just under the surface many times, there's chaos and turmoil and, and a battle within. Paul struggled with a battle against sin in Romans chapter 7. He said, oh, wretched man that I am. He was talking about being a sinner and, and, and this fight. He, talk, he was talking about in, in Romans chapter 7 how he does what he's not supposed to do. He doesn't do what he wants to do. And it's like, wow, there's a battle and a war. And there's turmoil within. There's turmoil in the hearts and lives of the people in this world. Fortunately, God knows the unrest we feel within ourselves. He made us. He knows our hearts. He knows that we hunger for peace within. And he knows that the broken world around us uh, and, the, and the clamor around us seeks to destroy that. That's why he said in Philippians uh, chapter 4, be careful for nothing. That, that term simply means uh, don't fret about stuff. Don't get overly consumed. He's not saying uh, forget about all, anything that's going on in life. He's not saying that. 
He's not saying, hey, bad stuff happens, get over it. He's not saying that. He's saying, don't let these things consume you. Don't let them uh, oppress you. Don't let them steal your peace. He says, be careful for nothing, but in everything. So here's the, here's the uh, flip side of the coin. Don't be in turmoil. Okay, Lord, I, I can't just tell myself not to be in turmoil. What do I do about it? He says, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. If you do that, you get to receive the benefit of verse 7. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. What an incredible promise. You could be like that duck. Turmoil, craziness. And, and, and then, then you can go into the throne room of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And it says here that his peace transcends all understanding. It passes. That word passes means to transcend. It doesn't mean erase anything that's going on. It means God's peace transcends anything that makes any sense whatsoever because it's God. And he's greater than your conflict. He's greater than your turmoil. He's greater than your problems. He's even greater than your own heart. The Bible says if your heart condemns you, God is greater than your heart. He's greater than everything, anything that you experience inside or outside. He is greater than that. The peace of God demonstrates itself most when peace just does not make sense. And that's how we know it's peace from God, peace of the Lord. It's easy to be at peace, be tranquil, when the world is at peace and tranquil. There haven't been very many years of that. That's easy, okay? And the world expects that. But what the world doesn't expect is, man, you're going through it, but you're at peace. No, you're not okay with what's going on. God doesn't say, hey, Hannah, you're experiencing a tough time, but be okay with it. He's not saying that. He's saying, I'm going to give you my peace through it. There's a huge difference. We don't have to like illness and economic struggles and turmoil and conflict with we don't have to like that stuff but we can rest in the peace of the Lord because it transcends that it's beyond our understanding it has the power to keep or to guard our hearts and mind in Christ Jesus basically God's peace is uh, great enough to defy it's strong enough to defy your worst nightmare it's above and beyond it how? Well, remember, God gave his peace in the form of who? Yes, in the form of Christ. In, and, and, and let me ask you this. We're going we're to do a little test. How many of you like tests? One. Okay. A couple of you. I love tests. Okay. Um, um, in the 33 and a half so years that Jesus was in his, uh, uh, conducting his earthly ministry, okay? Uh, toward the end there, the, the guards came to take him away. Remember, remember what happened, right? We'll talk about that in a few months. But the guards came to take him away. If he decided not to let them, was there any power in the universe that could have changed that? Was there any power that could have said, no, Jesus, you're coming whether you like it or not? No, nothing. All the powers in the universe could have rallied, and basically they did. Okay, but I love, I love when, when they, they said, well, we're looking for Jesus. They said, they said, well, here I am. And they all fell down. The whole army fell down. God establishing the fact that, no, you're not taking me, but I'm going with you. So, establishing that even in the conflict, even in the chaos, even in all of that turmoil, God was still in control. He's on the cross for crying out loud. He's with one of his last breaths. He didn't, he wasn't, killed he wasn't murdered he gave up the ghost he gave up his life showing that even with his last breath even in the darkness of death he was still in control god is far above and beyond anything 
that you and I can face. He's still in control. He is the reason we can have peace within. He is Emmanuel, God with us, who offers the gift of peace. And as we enter the throne room of God, we're made aware of the fact that he is the, the maker, the, the creator of heaven and earth, the one that holds it all together. And it's in that time that we spend in his presence that we receive the peace of God, that we bask in the peace of God, that we're reminded of the peace of God, that we can sit back and say, okay, God, you, you've got this. So the turmoil that's in my heart can be transformed. The peace that I'm craving, that I'm hungering, that he offers, can transform my, uh, um, uh, my view of this world and my view of what's going on and, and the turmoil in my heart. And I can, I, can, I can rest in the Lord. God offers peace with him. He offers peace within. And he offers peace to come. He offers peace to come. So we've looked at the gift of peace with God. We've looked at the peace that he offers within. But what about the situations that we find ourselves in that we cannot change? Because let's be honest. We can acknowledge, oh, I got peace with God. That's great. Okay, my, my, my eternity is set. Okay. But how many of you, it, it, it's, ever, it's, it's hit you, yeah, my eternity is set. I wish I was there already because my right now is not. Any of you felt, ever felt that way? Like, yeah, heaven's going to be great. Gee, I kind of wish I was there right now. Anybody feel that way at times? Man, it's, it's, it's ever-present. It's like, gee, this world is crazy. But in heaven it will be different. kind of wish I was there right now. Okay? What do we do during those times? What do we do with the situations we can't change, the relationships that are broken, the chaos that we can't calm, the hurt that we can't heal, the violence that we can't understand. Does it bother you that there's violence in the world? Does it? It bothers me. Does it bother you that there's starvation in the world? Does it bother you that there's pestilence in the world and corruption in the world? It bothers me. It, 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 many times it angers me. And it would seek to steal my peace. And what do we do during those times? This is where we recognize the dual nature of Advent. We've been, we've been talking about Advent, uh, um, the arrival, the coming. Okay? And there's a dual nature to it. Okay? We celebrate today. And I am so, so excited that you guys are here. We're we celebrate today, we celebrate the coming of Christ, his first coming. That's one part. In the midst of that, as we lit the candles and look forward to, what are we looking forward to, his first coming? Are we looking forward to Christ's first coming? No, we're looking back to his first coming, which is right and proper. I think it's great. I love Christmas time. I love celebrating Christmas time. We look back. But we also do what? We also look forward. We look forward to him coming again. There's eight times as many prophecies about him coming the second time than when he came the first time. And we can, we, when the turmoil, when the chaos, we're okay with God. He is, he's taken away the, the, the sin that blocks, that is between us. We, we can rest in him, the turmoil that's within us, the battle that's within us. We can go before the throne of God and we can, we can receive his peace and, and rest in the knowledge that he's got it. But when the world is upside down, when the world is exploding, when the world is out of control, we look forward to when he's coming in. See, God has given us peace now with him. He's given us peace within ourselves as well. But the world is still in chaos until he comes again. And when we look at the world, we're like, man, this is a horrible place at times. We look forward to when he comes again. That is the beauty of this Advent. When we come face to face with him, uh, uh, John 16, 33 says this, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me, Christ is speaking, in him you might have peace. In the world, what are we going to have? What are we going to have in the world? Tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. 
Our king is aware of the brokenness of this world. Our king is aware of uh, what we're living in and the, and the chaos and the turmoil that's running rampant on our planet. But in the midst of the unrest, he has a plan. He has a plan to rescue and restore that which is broken right now. He did it in you. He did it in you. Uh, I don't know. You know, I can't look and, and, and pick out the people who know Christ and the people who don't know. It's, it's deeper than that. But I suspect that some of you at least know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Yes, thank you. Somebody acknowledge it. At least one more of you do. That's good. Okay? I suspect. Uh, and so, so wait a minute. What did God do? What did he do? He, you are a picture, an icon, a, 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 uh, a, a version of what he's planning to do with all of creation. How many of you were rotten, no good, despicable scoundrels before you came to know the Lord. Okay. And some of you were not. Okay. And I'm glad that you didn't all put your hands up. Okay. Some of you were just kind of people. But some of us, yeah, I'm sorry, instead of just kind of people. But some of us were dirty and rotten. And, 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 man, Pastor Kim, you and I have talked about this. We talked about the, 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 the stuff that we lived through before we came to know Christ. Yet he's taken that and he's flipped that around. Pastor Kim, when, how old, I'm sorry to, put, to pick on you, but how old were you when you came to know the Lord? 23. And you're at least 33 now. Okay. So for a number of years, you've known the Lord since then. I suspect the same is true with you, that, that when you think back to that guy before he met Christ and became you, how alien do the thoughts and the feelings and the actions feel Complete separation, right? It's like a, it's literally like a different person, I suspect, right? And many of you can, many of you can relate to that. Who I was before that day was someone else. And Christ is, comp and I look, now, Pastor Kim, you're a lot closer to, to, to perfection than I am, but we're still not perfect. We've got a ways to go. But my goodness, Compared to what we were, the thoughts, the emotions, you know, you know, how many of you know what I'm talking about? If you, how many of you, say it, give me an amen somewhere. Okay, we got an amen over there. Excellent. Okay, it's like, it's like a, what is, what is it, an auction. Hey, we got an amen over there. All right? If God can do it in us, certainly he can do it in this world. If God can change my very heart and mind and thoughts and actions and, and, and feelings, certainly, certainly, he can change this world. And that's the hope that we have. Because it's not a hope that comes from the world. It's a hope that comes, a peace that comes from within, where Christ dwells. There are some, I don't know if you've ever been on a tour through a, a, a castle. Some of the castles in Europe, um, they, have, uh, they have deep wells in the midst of the castle. Deep wells. And, and the reason of that, for that is um, that when there was a siege on the castle, the first thing the enemies would do is cut off the water supply flowing into the city, uh, into the castle. That's the very first thing. It, it, it's, it's War 101. Cut off the water supply. No water going in. And then many times they would wait them out. And it would only take a few days and then all of a sudden they'd... But, but some, of the, some of the castles would have a well in the midst of the castle, deep well, 
all the way down to where, where there were deep aqueducts under the ground filled with life-giving water. And the siege around the outside of the castle could go on for years. And it would not matter because the water wasn't coming from the outside in. It was coming from the inside. That's exactly the peace that God offers to us. When we come to know Christ as Lord and Savior, the peace does not come from the outside in the world. There's a siege going on in your life, in my life, in our homes, in our families, in our church. There's a siege going on. But if Christ is the center, he runs very deep. And his peace is very, very deep. 2 Corinthians says this. Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace, always, by all means. The Lord be with you all. There is no greater source of peace than what's found in Christ Jesus. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads for a moment and close your eyes. Our God is so good. He is so incredible. I cannot begin to tell you how excited I am to be here this morning sharing Christmas morning with this beautiful faith family. Opening up these gifts. Some of you already did that this morning. You got up a little extra early and you opened up the gifts with your kids and and then came in. And I'm glad you're here. Some of you are going to do it when you leave. You're going to go home. The kids are like, is he ever going to shut up so we can get home and open up our gifts? That's soon, kids, soon. Right? Yeah, I'm I'm with you, Natalie. I want to go open my gifts too right now, okay? But during this time, this, this past month, we've been looking at gifts that God has given to us. And we've opened up one each week. We've opened up hope. God offers hope to those that come to know him as Lord and Savior. We opened up love. It was his love that uh, moved him to come and to love, uh, to die for us. Joy, we talked about last week. And the joy of the Lord, which is beyond our wildest expectations. A joy that comes from knowing him as Lord and Savior. And today we talked about peace. We opened up this gift. A peace that springs from within where Christ dwells. But maybe you walked in here today not knowing him. As Savior. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you joined us today, whether you've been coming for 10 years or this is your first time. I don't don't know. Only you and God know if you know the Lord. Only you and God know if you're able to rest in his hope, bask in his love, enjoy his joy, and receive his peace. Only you know. But if you have not, my Bible says today is the day of salvation. My Bible says if you call upon the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. Not by doing a bunch of works, not by being a great guy or a great gal. It doesn't come from those outside things. It comes from God himself. You can call upon the name of the Lord right now. I'm going to help you do that if you have not. If you have, praise God, pray for anybody that maybe has not. What does salvation mean? Salvation means the wall of separation, the uh, uh, adversary relationship that you once had with God is gone. And you have heaven offered to you forever. So right now, right where you are, if God has spoken to you, you can pray. You can say, Lord, I am not perfect. I have sinned. And I'm sorry. I truly am. Then you can say this. You can say, Lord, I don't understand everything about this, but right now, this moment, as best as I know how, I turn from those sins. I turn to you, and I place my faith, my hope, and my trust in your risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, everyone's heads are bowed, everyone's eyes are closed.
We're going to close in prayer in just a moment. But, but if, you, if you just prayed with me, if you just called upon the name of the Lord, if you just placed your faith, your hope, and your trust in Christ as Savior, there's a celebration in heaven right now that makes anything that we can muster up here on earth look pretty tame because of what just happened in your heart. And I would love to pray for you. I'm not going to make you jump up and down or come forward or any of this, but I would love to pray for you today. I'd love to pray for you throughout the week. So if you just called upon the mill, if you just prayed with me from your heart, without anyone else looking around, could you do me a favor? Could you lift up your hand? You could put it right back down. I just want to see who you are just for a moment, just to see so I can keep you in my prayers. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, you are incredible. Father, for those that have called upon your name today, I ask, Lord, that you would comfort them, that you would fill them with your peace. Father, for each and every one of us today, I ask that you would help us to, to walk from these, uh, uh, these walls today and, and remember the gifts that you've freely given to us. Father, I ask that you would lay your hand of blessing upon each and every person here today. We love you so very much. We come to you in Jesus' name.